Welcome to Agency for Agents, a podcast for real estate team leaders and independent brokerage owners looking to maximize profits, effectiveness, and gain freedom for their team and business. Your hosts, Christine Andreasen and Aaron Hendon, have been running one of the most successful real estate teams in the Seattle area for more than eight years. They know building a winning team means finding ways to empower, nurture, train, and develop individual agents to discover their own power their own agency. On the podcast, Christine and Aaron interview thought leaders in real estate and personal growth to help you impact both your performance and your teams. We know it takes a lot and leaders and brokers that crack that code reap the rewards of success greater than any they could ever achieve on their own. Okay. Well, Brett, Thank you for being on the show. We're looking forward to hearing all about the team you're leading at Compass and how you got started and that whole deal. So thanks for making the time to be on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Well, let's just jump in. So, you know, we were talking pre-show a little bit about your background, never wanted to be a realtor, but then someone put a gunny sack over your head and you woke up in the middle of the testing and you were, what happened? how did you get to So, well, I could go way back, but basically I grew up in a family with parents that were realtors and, um, you know, I used to, it used to occupy my family dinners and just, I never wanted to be a realtor. Then in high school, I was lucky enough to be given the part-time job of working at a real estate, my parents' real estate office. Back before we had computers, answering calls, can I get into the open house? Can I set an appointment? And what happened was I it became worse. Like the realtors that were calling, I did never want to deal with again. They were mean, they were rude. And I was just the young high school kid answering the call, trying to set appointments. Didn't want to go to the real estate. I ended up being a lawyer. I um, worked at the, like the public defender's office in Philadelphia. I, um, I loved it. Didn't found out it didn't pay a lot of money. Then moved to New York city and did real estate law, uh, more like the bankruptcy and the foreclosure Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't like that. And somehow I got involved in um, sales, like telecom sales back when it was like booming. And I was horrible at it and got hooked up with a team where everybody was horrible. Everybody was new. <laughs> no one knew what they were doing. And somehow we all got it to click at once. And that's when I learned, like, if you're on a team where everyone's trying and new, and even if they're screwing up, you can make something good out of it. Good, because that's the other thing you were talking about is how you like training people. So how did that influence your training now? And talk to me about what, you know, how you you were saying pre-show that you love new agents, right? Which is, I think it's more common than you think it is, right? right? I mean, I think there's sort of the, sure, we every team would love to have seasoned agents, you know, cappers that are like, yeah, hey, let me join up with you. But that's so rare that you wind up with a capper from the blue, out of the blue coming to a team. Talk to me about what, you know, why you love new agents, how you train them and how that whole situation of everyone sucking at sales has influenced your training. So I just feel like anything I've ever done professionally, (laughs) when someone tells you how to do it, which is basically the way they did it, Mm -hmm. and you try to follow that exact method, it just doesn't work or it just didn't for me. Going back even to like when I was a lawyer and I went to law school and we sat in class and did learn millions of things. When I actually got to the job that I had to do, I knew yeah. nothing. And it it took me actually going up and trying a case and being horrible at it to, to start getting it. Yeah. Well, and it's then, certainly a case in real estate. I mean, yeah, yeah. our testing so, is the worst, right. least util, u- least useful testing I've ever seen in my life. The <laughs> training that real estate agents get is just absurd. Yeah. It's absurd. Right. So then how I many got, rods in an acre, Ron, Brett? How many how, I couldn't even how many sections in a township? Hurry up. What do you mean you don't know? What's your problem? Right. Yeah. So then I got into real estate and um, I, it was the same type of thing. People were telling me, sit on the phone, make cold calls, go to open houses every weekend. And it just wasn't working for me. And then one day it just kind of like clicked that I just started doing my own thing, doing almost the opposite of what everybody was telling me, figuring out ways to get into to leads and stuff like that, that were different from other ways that people did it. And uh, I just got on a roll and I just kept going and going and going. And that's when I realized, don't listen to whatever anyone else says, don't care what anyone else says, and just figure out what's best for you. And while some things might work best 
one person, it might not for the other. And then I started, um, I guess, because I was pretty new at it. I had only done it a couple of years. I felt like hiring newer people that were in the same same boat and letting them have free reign of what they thought they were good at right. and just kind of like pushing them, showing them what I was good at, but not saying you have to do it that way. I think things have changed, like with technology that 20 years ago, you know, the way that one realtor is doing things that work then, but it might not be the best way to do it now. And that's why I wanted newer people. And uh, Good. Well, let me ask you about that because, you know, we run trainings, at, you know, I mean, I, I train my own agents, I train other teams, agents, and there's a couple of things in what you're saying. And I think I hear you, but I want to make sure because there's a difference between well, do whatever you want and find out what you're good at because whatever you want. I mean, I got agents and I would, you, I get, let me ask you, I mean, I've had, I have an agent that only wants to post on social media, even though that's a long-term play and it's not going to bring in any deals next month. And I can't get her to talk to people. And I don't care how you talk. I think what you're saying is the same thing I say, which is, look, I don't care how you talk to people. You could do it through social media, but it's got to turn into conversations. You could do it through open houses, but it's got to turn into conversations. You could do it by door knocking, cold calling, networking, host parties. I don't care what you do, but you got to talk to people. There's no getting, I mean, unless you're saying something different than that. No, I mean, I'm, no, I think what you're saying is right. Um, it has to work. <laughs> so yeah, it's got to right. It's got to yeah, work. And yeah. I don't think so. At least for me, one particular way didn't isn't enough. Like you have to do That's right. different things. And so, I don't do open houses, but everyone on my team does them, and they love them, and I hate them, and I don't do them because I yeah. hate them, and I dread going to do it. So I don't do that. So that I think, but at the end of the day, that three hour, five hour block needs to be used to generate conversations. And if you're not talking to people, you're not talking to people. There's no help for you. Yeah. It has to net into a conversation. Yeah. And then I guess like, so recently I connected with a social, uh, like a, like a social media marketing company Uh to make videos uh, Uh for myself and our team. And it's something I already, I always knew, but like right now the big trend is reels and like yes. people will go on and like lip sync ridiculous things and make ridiculous things. And it's funny and you get likes, but what they were telling me and what I also knew is, is that really translating into a client calling you up and it's more, you look like an idiot and you might get some likes, but it's not right. really fun. Yeah. So. No, I hear you on that. And and I look, I mean, I social media is a big part. I don't, I don't want what I said about this agent doing social media all the time to be, I don't do, we do social media. And of course we do, you know, yeah. we do reels, we do TikTok, we do, you know, whatever we need to do to keep our face in front of people. But, you know, when she says, I'm not going to be going call, I'm not doing le- what I'm doing. What she, what she says is that what I'm doing for my lead gen is I'm making TikToks and I'm saying, okay, well then you'll be out of the business in two months because it's that's not, not a two month play. Yeah. <laughs> you should do that, but then you have to, do something that's going to put you in front of a possible buyer or seller now. Mm-hmm. Um, good. And so talk to me about the training you do for your team. How many te- how many agents do you have on your team? And, you know, do you start them at a, is there a Kajabi that they go through? How do you actually train your, your team? Um, you got a so, new agent. How many agents do you have? So I have eight agents. Uh-huh. Uh, so I've slowly added them. So they didn't all come in at once. Started uh, basically with me and two others. And it's now up to eight. We have like a transaction coordinator and sales assistant that helps. And basically the way I, I mean, so train them a couple of ways. Our company does do training, formal trainings. Um, I also can do a formal training and I do here and there. The toughest part is our schedules are all different. So getting everybody together at the same time mm-hmm. isn't always isn't always easy. So do you have uh, weekly meetings or any kind of, we were having like every other, the summer has been a little tough because everybody goes away and stuff like that, but Mm -hmm. um, we'll start them again. And then, but basically like anyone on my team knows they can call me at any time. It could be 1130 Mm -hmm. at night. It could be seven in the morning. And I believe more in like on hand training, like, like actually going out and visiting clients, going to a listing Mm -hmm. appointment, bringing them with it, you know, going on any of their showings because when I started, and even a lot of companies, they just push this training, this training, sitting either in a live classroom or watching videos and videos and videos. And 
to me, yeah, you get some knowledge, but half of it you don't use. And then even when you do use it, you still have to see how it applies. Yeah. To real people. People are different. People are, you know, some people are crazy. Some people are normal. Some people yeah. are quiet. So, so you have to like actually just, it's like practice. You just yeah. do it. So I believe in just like going, yeah. taking them to an appointment. Fabulous. And how do you, you know, so now, so a new agent comes on your team. First of all, what are the split? What are this? What are your, uh, like, your splits with them? Yeah. So like, that's the other thing. When I started real estate, you know, I, I see all these teams and they come out and they pay, they pay, I guess they're, it seems like their job is to make a lot of money off of each actual agent on their team. And I guess I didn't want to do that um, because I wanted to keep them. I want to keep them for forever. If they come to me and say they need more money, we'll mm-hmm. discuss it. And um it's not so much me making money off each one. It's more that if I want to go on vacation next week, I have four different people who could pick up what Fill I in, Yeah. Yeah. And also grow the team so that we're the best team. And, yeah. you know, um, so, but I, so I generally pay them like 70% off the bat. And if they sell a good amount, then we have a discussion and we go up from there. Great. And what do they get for their 30%? And that's on top of the compass split, right? That's on top of the compass cap. Yeah. So, um, I mean, so they get me. <laughs> they get you. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm here all the time. I give them leads, Zillow leads. I get like listing leads. I don't believe in like withholding listings from new agents. I think yeah. everybody should just go and do everything. They get this the CRM that our company gives, but I, on top of that, I have a CRM. We have a transaction coordinator, a sales assistant who will do anything. Yeah. Um, she's really good. We have a virtual, virtual assistants who make phone calls and get leads. They get everything. Signs are paid for. Yeah, um, good. If, that's uh, great. I mean, yeah, that's, I just, you know, like that's what they get for the 30%. That's great. Then that's a great starting split in terms of yeah. what teams generally offer. And, you know, it's certainly on the higher end of what I found to be in terms of a new agent coming in. And then I love the idea of, you know, hands on, like here, let's go do it together. Any agreements they make around Legion or, you know, is there any uh, production requirements to be on the team? Do people have to do a deal a month? Is, you don't care. Has six months. How does that, any that I work? mean, no. There hasn't been yet. No, everybody on the team has been working. So, you know, if we ever, but it, there's no requirement like that. Great. Very good. And then is there anything that you found, you know, hasn't been working or, you know, you, you grapple with, like, what are the things that keep you up at night around the team? I guess um, people not working as hard as I work or mm-hmm. wanting to, to be as successful as I want to be. Yeah. Um, there are some people that come in that are just, me and then yeah. there's other people that um come in and like you know they'll work two days a week and be happy with it so it's hard to like shape everybody to be as yeah not everyone wants to be a, a team leader, leader. Right? some people yeah. just don't want as much i guess right I guess. and so culturally on the team that doesn't that hasn't shown up for you like a problem culturally like with other people I, no i mean i just everybody's different so i treat every body Uh based on what they want. And as long as they're happy, I'm happy. That's great. Very cool. Yeah. But having people be as interested in succeeding as you are is a really good way to put that or even have whatever their definition of success is. Cause you know, you, you get someone who's got two young kids and their definition of success is, you know, at home every day by five and weekends off and that's their definition of success. And they're, you know, I've certainly interviewed enough team leaders where it's, you know, if that's the person on their team and they want to have a team that has people like that on it, because not every team leader wants people like, you know, like that on it. But even then, if they do, then it's great. You know, we'll do a 60, 40 and you, you know, all you do is turn in your paperwork and you're done and whatever. So ways to get all, anything can work as long as it works for you. And that's, it's good. Any places where you're, you have questions about, are you doing it right? Is this the best way to do it? Is there some more efficient way to get this aspect of my team? Um, I don't know. Like to me, so it seems like 90% of people that go into real estate don't stay in real estate very long from what I hear. So, I mean, to me, you either want to be in it or you don't. And if you're work, you know, if you're working hard and everything, I'm helping you on top of it. But if you're, there's just some people that aren't, 
cut to do it. And yeah, well, some people want to sell houses, fight. and that's just yeah. not what this is. <laughs> you can't you really can't fight it? So mm. you no, know, I listen and to whatever. Yeah, got what do you think your success rate is? You know, I mean, standard industry standard is like two, you know one out of four agents make it kind of thing. Is that about right for your team? Is that about right in your experience over your time? Or is there better than that? So I've only been doing, I haven't even been doing it a year, a, a year as far as running. As the team. Yeah. And because everybody's new, there's definitely like a couple month period. Right. But I would say, you know, out of the eight people, well, some of them are, and some of them are only a couple months in. Right. So you wouldn't know yet. Yeah. I'd say out of, I, I could clearly say out of the five that have been here at least like six months, every one of them at least has sold several houses and has potential to, to stay in this for me. Yeah. Great. That's great. And that, you know, I mean, that's definitely working. That's one of those things that's absolutely working for you, Brett. That's fabulous. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I think, I think the, the main problem is with anyone in real estate, when they first get into it, if you're not succeeding within a certain amount of months, you get discouraged and you yes. get out. So like my key with me and with everybody is to like make you succeed quick. And then, yeah, that is definitely something that's universal. And the other thing that's universal, Brett, that I've found is, you know, the good, the successful teams all have a team leader that have your attitude, which is I'm here to have my people win. That's your only job is to have them succeed. That's your job one. It's not your only job, but that's certainly the first job is that if you're going to have a team, you got to actually be interested in the person. You know, it's, it's, again, it's like selling anything. You got to be interested in the person and what their needs are, you know, what their pain points are and how you can deliver for them. So, you know, sounds like you're, that's all rocking. Great. Fabulous. Brett, I appreciate all that because it's exactly the kind of thing that I, I love to hear about in terms of where other teams are at. Is there anything that I didn't ask that I should have asked you? Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about that I didn't ask? No, I don't think so. All right, cool. All right, well, then the only question I, the question I always end with is, what are you reading? What should I be reading that I'm not reading or listening to? Um, so I'm like, so the, I don't read much. I'll put that out there. I, I read so much in law school and college and I just kind of didn't want to read again. I listened to podcasts like this one because I think it's interesting to hear other people mm -hmm. who are doing the same type thing and how they do it because everyone does it. And the way I get so many listings is, is listening to people. So I ran into a book which has nothing to do with real estate, but I kind of like by default, it actually has helped me. It's called Psychopath Free. And it's about um, basically like not some people, they're, you think you know how to talk to someone and certain people have issues that you might not even know. And what they're trying to do is more like manipulate you. Um, and I started learning that like this happens with client. With, I've ran into people who are, friends that have it. There's people that are clients with it. There's other realtors that have it. And sometimes it's best to just either walk away from these type of people or just if you learn how to handle them, it helps you with the situation specifically in real estate. And it also makes you a better person. So the book came out of uh, nowhere. I read it. Somebody told me to read it and it actually has helped with real estate. So I love it, Brett. That is so good because, you know, no one's recommended that book for me. <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. I love it. Psychopath free. Is that right? Yep. All right, man. It's going to, it's going on my audible queue. That's all I do is just, you know, listen while I drive around that and Freakonomics Radio, <laughs> the, the, the two podcasts I listen to. Tom Ferry, too. Cool. All right, Brett. Well, thanks for taking a little bit of time. Have a great rest of your day and rest of your Labor Day. And, uh, you know, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. You too. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Abundant Life Podcast. Brought to you by Christine and & Company and EXP Realty, the global online brokerage powered by top agents and cutting-edge technology. If you liked what you heard, consider subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. Your hosts have been award-winning brokers, Christine Andreessen and Aaron Hendon. For more on them, visit christineandcompany.com.